Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna talk about two things and you're gonna learn those two things. The first is how to target the inner chest and really the anatomy of the inner chest. And then also how to set up and execute motions for the inner chest on chest pressing machines. So when we're looking to target any muscle, we need to keep in mind, firstly, that uh, we need to sort of understand the anatomy of the muscle, right? So this is kind of this triangle here is the inner chest. The inner chest attaches all along the sternum here, and it runs over across this way to where the other pecs attach to on the upper arm. So first and foremost, we need to set ourselves up in a position to actually be able to stretch and shorten that muscle most efficiently. And the way that we do that in the case of the inner chest is by doing a couple things. The first, is by using an arm path that is not super, super wide and that is also not super, super narrow. Okay, so I'll do this in a different color here. What you'll notice is that my arm path, right, so this is my torso right here, my arm path is kind of like not super, super wide, but not super, super narrow. So it's kind of represented by the yellow here, and if I clear that just to not muddy the water, I'm not using an arm path that's like all the way out here, and I'm not using an arm path, again, this is my torso, that is all the way down here, narrow to the body. It's kind of somewhere sort of striking the middle, and anything kind of in this middle end of the range is gonna be great for stretching the middle chest. But what we also need to keep in mind is the stop point. In other words, where the arm is ending up in the motion. So if I pause in this position, what's important to keep in mind here, a little bit more difficult to see, but if you imagine an attachment site somewhere you know, over here through that arm, this attachment site is essentially being brought right to that middle point here. A lot of people get distracted by sort of where the elbow is and where the bulk of muscle on the arm is, and they say, oh, this bend, this just looks like a decline press. And although it does look a little bit like a decline press, right, you have to keep in mind that we're bringing attachment sites together. We're not super, super concerned about what the sort of external features of muscle bulk and bones actually look like. So within reason, we can basically press anywhere within this window and target the middle chest really, really effectively. So once we've determined our stop points and our starting points, we can basically just work backwards from there. I.e., if you, you know, do this and go through this motion that I'm showing you right here without any machine, that is the path through which that middle pec is going to stretch maximally and shorten maximally, or at least as much as we can in this scenario. Um, and, and that applies across any motion, right? So if you're doing a dumbbell press or a cable press or you have a different machine, you can know, okay, before I get into this machine, that this kind kind of thing here needs to be the arm path that I'm using in whatever motion that I'm you know, performing. And if we work backwards from there appropriately, we just say, okay, well now I just simply need a resistance, in this case coming from the handles, that is just pushing my hands backward in this direction. And so to understand how we need to interact with the resistance of a chest pressing machine, we need to kind of look at a little bit of a different angle here. So if we look at this angle here, a couple of things are gonna start to become a little bit more clear. And the first thing that's gonna become hopefully most clear is the relationship between the forearm, i.e. this whole thing right here, and the handle. And specifically, uh, not just the handle, but really where the force is actually coming through the handle at any given moment. So again, that green line represents my forearm, and to represent the resistance that is coming through the handle uh, via my hand and into the rest of my body, we can just draw like a straight line that's basically going through the handle like that. And the reason that I know that this is the force direction at this point is because I'm basically just pushing equal and opposite in that direction. And so what you'll notice first is that my forearm, you almost can't even see, you can see the sliver of this green line here. My forearm is basically covered in this case by the direction of resistance. And the reason that's important is because if you have a forearm position, I'll do this in green again, that is kind of angled like this, or that is kind of angled like this, weirdly, then what you'll notice is that there's gonna basically be a lot of force that is going through the shoulder and going through the elbow that is unrelated to the goal, right? So you might have some shoulder rotation forces. If your hands are a little bit more narrow, you might feel a lot more tricep. If they're too wide, maybe it's feeling a little bit more uncomfortable on your bicep, right? Whatever it happens to be, you might be putting your forearm in a position where it's not set up just to press directly through the handle. The way that I like to think about it is if the forearms are in the appropriate position, we basically just feel an automatic recruitment of the chest with not too much else going on. And what you'll notice throughout this motion is that my forearm pretty much always stays in that same relationship, right? At any point, if I pause the video, if I pause it here at the end, right, you see that forearm is pretty much close to 90 degrees from that handle. 
And in the bottom, it's pretty much close to 90 degrees from that handle. And the second that it moves away from that, it's going to be much more difficult for me to manage actually pushing directly through the machine in a way that is in accordance with targeting, in this case, the middle portions of the chest. And so as I go through this motion, I'm basically making sure that before I actually start my working sets, that forearm relationship to the handle is where it needs to be. And the way that I can manage that is through two things. One is where I choose to sort of put my hand on the handle in terms of its width. Right? So you'll see in this particular case that my hand is kind of closer to the inside of the handle as, as compared to the outside of the handle. That's just more comfortable for me. You can also experiment around with a little bit of a wider grip. Number one and number two is the seat height, right? So if you picture, if I were to move this seat height down so that my body was really low, what would need to happen is because all these segments are moving downward is my forearm would then need to angle kind of upward on this machine. And then all of a sudden I'm pushing at an angle that is not really 90 degrees from the machine. And it's probably going to feel a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward, and it may even feel uncomfortable on your forearm, wrist, or elbow, or even your shoulder. Um, if you're someone who's you know historically had issues in the past, it may come up more easily. And even if you're not, maybe eventually it could be something that feels more problematic to you. So overall, those are the main sort of principles, which is number one, we want to basically set up in a position that's specific to stretching and shortening the inner pecs. But then number two, we want to make sure that our forearms are in line with the resistance, as I demonstrated earlier. And another way to think about it is how I said it um, just a moment ago, in that my forearm basically stays 90 degrees from the handle throughout the entire time. And the way that I make sure that it stays 90 degrees is just by toggling two things, the arm path and how wide or narrow I am, and then also the seat height itself. Now, some chest press machines will feel more intuitively easy to set up, more comfortable to set up. And so some machines you may sit down on and intuitively you just, these things line up naturally. And in other machines, it's a little bit sort of more weird to adjust. Maybe you have to adjust the seat a couple times, adjust your grip width a couple times. But as long as you're constantly tweaking with those variables, again, arm path, specifically where on the handle you're grabbing and the seat height, you're going to end up finding a position that is more comfortable than others. And that is likely the position that you should go with. Now, another thing to sort of notice and keep in mind about this is that I'm not sort of slumped over in my posture, right? So to just pause it and sort of talk a little bit more about the anatomy stuff, I'm not slumped over in a position where my neck is really far forward and my chest isn't proud. I'm pulling my chest into position that's a little bit more proud. I'm a little bit sort of sternum up to the ceiling, a little bit of arch in the back. And again, the reason it's not that arching is good or, or that arching inherently will equal more pec recruitment, it's that relative to the resistance that I have set up, this arch position allows me to put these middle pec fibers in a really good place to be able to pull the arm in a forward direction. And so again, I'm not really sort of slumped over in the seat. I'm not caving my chest in every rep. I'm keeping my chest relatively proud. And then I'm basically just a allowing the setup to in, to, in essence, do the work for me because I know that I've put the muscle in the appropriate position to be the solution to the problem of the physics around the body. Now, another key uh, feature to any middle chest or inner chest movement is to make sure that you're not intentionally restricting scapular motion. And what that basically means is that you're not pinning your shoulder blades back, you're not pinning your shoulder blades down, you're basically just setting the position of your arch, and then you're allowing your upper arm, which is this bone, right here, your scapula, which is, you know, if you could picture the scapula sort of behind the body over there, and your clavicle, which is your collarbone here, you're allowing all those things to pivot backward on the way back. And then on the press forward, you're allowing them to pivot forward. You shouldn't really have to think too, too much about it. But one thing that I can advise in terms of something that, uh, in terms of a cue is very, very helpful uh, for many people that I've worked with and, and personal trainers that I uh, have taught who work with clients is that cueing this motion through the armpit itself, it tends to be very helpful. Right? So rather than thinking about just this as a motion that's occurring through you pushing your hands in this direction, you almost want to imagine like your armpit is the thing that is moving backward, and then your armpit is the thing that is moving forward whenever you're going through the presses. And that is super, super important, number one, because that's where the middle pecs attach is to the upper arm. So your armpit is essentially where the motion is actually occurring from, from a tendinous standpoint in terms of where the tendon is pulling. But number two, if you're allowing your armpits to move, then you're also allowing the shoulder girdle to move. 
In the shoulder girdle, again, those three bones, the upper arm, the clavicle or collarbone, and scapula or shoulder blade, those three bones are all moved by the inner pecs. So if you are intentionally restricting motion of the shoulder girdle, whether it be the scapula and the clavicle or the upper arm for whatever reason, then you are unintentionally limiting the amount of contribution that your middle pecs can actually have to the motion. And a lot of people, I've gotten comments in the past, they will say something like, well, Ben, you have a really strong mind-muscle connection to your pecs, because, oh my gosh, look at how much your pecs are contracting. I'm thinking not at all about squeezing my pecs. The only thing I'm thinking about is setting myself up in the appropriate position so that the physics can do the work for me in some sense, and then making sure that I'm just allowing the things to move that need to move for me to accomplish the goal. So just to sort of rinse and repeat the major points here, Number one, you need to make sure that you're starting in a position like this position here that you see where you're allowing this middle pack to stretch. That includes a slight arch in the spine, uh, a path of the arm that is not super wide out here and that is not super narrow, but rather somewhere in between in this window. And number three, you're using an arm path and really a forearm position and a seat position that allows you to basically push pretty much 90 degrees from that handle the entire time so that you don't end up recruiting a ton of tricep, you don't end up recruiting a ton of other things, potentially just getting discomfort in the shoulder that would be not in accordance with the goal of training the middle pecs. So I hope this all makes sense. If it doesn't, drop a comment below to ask me. And if you're someone who's super interested in these concepts and learning about these concepts more deeply, but you don't know where to start learning, my beginner biomechanics course is going to be the perfect solution for you. The beginner course is basically made for the person who has no experience learning about biomechanics or anatomy or any of this stuff. And in just 30 days, you can learn so much of what you need to know to understand biomechanics and how it applies to actually lifting in the gym. So if that sounds good to you and you're someone who really doesn't like boring textbook lectures or reading books, then check out the link in the description below to access my beginner biomechanics course.